I'm going to be completely honest with you. About two and a half years ago, I couldn't organize anything. I couldn't plan anything. I was struggling to get essays done more than an hour before the deadline. But when I found out about Notion about two and a half years ago, that kind of just turned on its head. And that's the story that I want to tell in this video. My journey using the Notion app, I think a lot of you can resonate with. I started using it, I had no idea where to start, got confused by databases, confused by formulas. I was like, I don't know how to use this thing. But I'm so glad I stuck with the app and I developed my workflow and my workspace over time and added, took things away, changed my workspace as time evolved. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to give you an overview of my system in Notion, but this is a beginning video to a series because my system is very large. Having one video on that would be like an hour long. And don't get me wrong, I love Notion, but I wouldn't watch an hour of someone talking about Notion. Okay, that was definitely a lie. I would probably watch an hour or more of Notion because I watch all the live streams and stuff that goes on. But anyway, I'm going to try and keep this as short as I can, give you an overview of my space, and then go further in depth in future videos in this series. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay part of the conversation. For free Notion templates, check out the link in the description below. So diving straight in, this is my dashboard. This is basically where I spend most of my time. I don't have a place where I hold my pages because everything's here. So for those of you unfamiliar with my space, this is my tab bar, and these are my quick links to pages instead of using the sidebar. So if I bring my sidebar up, you can see I have the dashboard, which is where I spend all of my time, my public page, Danny Hatcher, my live stream page, Notion Livestream, then in my private space, I have a template page and then a load of other workspaces that I currently help other people out with, but that's not really part of anything that I do. The reason I don't like the sidebar up is because I feel like it squashes the screen, so just out of personal preference, I have that permanently hidden. This also gives me more space to, one, see more things on my screen, but also so that I can have numerous columns in my page. So as I look directly at my dashboard, you can see I have my tasks database, and this is my master task database that holds all of my tasks and all of my events for my personal and business life. If I needed to look at business tasks, I can look at my business view of my task database. If I want to look at personal tasks, I can look at the personal view of my tasks database. Now you can see I have a business event, but because it's an event, I want to see that straight away as my personal view because that's something I'm going to have to do. And you can also see I have another event because of the tag that's slightly below that will happen later on. Then at the top of my list, I have a publishing task. That is because obviously I publish content on YouTube and on social media. I want to know what is being published on the day. Then as I go down that task list, I have a tick box. And if I tick that task, it will disappear from my task view except from the ones at the bottom of the list, because these are recurring tasks. Now, Notion doesn't necessarily have recurring tasks in the most traditional sense, but you can build different workarounds for recurring tasks. So if I click on walk the dog, for example, this is a weekly recurring task for every Wednesday. So the tick box is always ticked. So I know it's a recurring task. I also have the recurring task emoji. And then I can just change when I last did the task. So if I go on to my engagement task, you can see it's a daily task. Then if I change last done date to today, it will disappear from my task view. But because I haven't done that yet, I'm going to move it back. This means as soon as I go into Notion, I can see all of the tasks I need to do today, all of the events I need to do today, all of the recurring tasks that I should get done today. And if you have a look at my review task, it has a formula view of a couple of rollups for cards and review areas. So in my personal space, I review something every single day. If I go into this task, you can see it's related to a lot of areas, which I'll go over in a minute. Then I have a rollup of how many cards are due, flashcards revision that are due, areas that I need to review, and then a formula that shows me cards and review so I can see it nice and succinct in that dashboard view. Now I also choose to order my tasks in priority. So if it's in my master task database, they are tasks with higher priority. And I sort it by due date, and this is a roll up of the project. So as you look at the task, you can see I have YouTube projects related to the task. So I'm sorting these tasks 
by the due date of the project. So if the project, i.e. the video, is due before another video, then those tasks need to get done sooner so they will be closer to the top of the list. Then I have my tags and then I have my date. And the due date makes sure that my recurring tasks are at the bottom of the list and the tag makes sure that the events are after my tasks. Then I have this database filtered so I don't see all of my tasks and events because that would be way too many things. So I'm looking for tasks that are not done because I need to do them or showing is ticked and that is for my recurring tasks. And the date is today because I only want to see tasks that are due today or due beforehand. So if I needed to do a task yesterday but I didn't get it done, I still want it to show for today and that will then show at the top of my list because of the due date. And I also want to make sure that it's not client because all of my client tasks will be in my business view. Now, because I'm doing my dissertation at the moment, I don't really have many business tasks because I'm focusing on my dissertation. Now, as I move over to the other side of my dashboard, this is where I have my inbox, which is my notes and anything else that I need to put down. So these can be template ideas, task things, ideas for anything that I've seen, any notes that I've made or anything that I need to do that isn't of high priority. Now, I have my dissertation as a count, and you can see I've used inline math to highlight that number. Now, as I scroll down, I have another view of my task database. So this is the exact same database I have just above, but this is in a calendar view, and this is only showing my events. And you can see I have times on the events, so the event that is due earliest will be at the top, and I have different emojis associated with each event. So you can see the ones with the orange person are business events, so Zoom meetings. And when I go in, you can see I have a reminder. I've attached it to the contact, which is a database in my areas space. And then I have templates at the bottom if I want to add other information into this event. The other events, they have an alarm emoji, so I know they are just normal events. There is nothing special about them, but I need to make sure that I'm doing it. The reason I have the emoji there is to make sure that if I have an emoji, I've pushed the template. So if there isn't an emoji on the event, so when you look at the Australia Q&A, I haven't gone through that event. So I've put the event in, but I haven't created a template for it yet, so I know I need to action that event in some way. Now I've mentioned areas and review, so I'm going to go into my review section first which is an emoji on my tab bar. And when I come into review, you can see I have flashcards due. And these are flashcards that I have created from either notes from videos, notes from podcasts, notes from anything that I've consumed and I want to remember. Now I've filtered this for cards that are due either today or beforehand because maybe I didn't have enough time to review all of the cards from yesterday. So they will then carry over to today. Each card has an associated emoji to the area it's related to. So if a card is related to a specific learning area, i.e. coding, productivity framework, mindset, productivity system, or anything else, you can see the emoji would be appropriate for that flashcard because that is where the flashcard is related. If there are notes related to the flashcard, that will be inside that flashcard so I can go find the original resource. Now you can see the exercise area has a tick and that means I need to review it. So if you remember back, my review card said I had one area to review and that's exercise. And that is a simple formula that says every 10 days, put a tick. Now I've reviewed this area and I can change my last review date to today. Now it won't be ticked. And then in my review card, it will now say zero areas to review. Next to my revision area, I have my notes database. And in my notes database, I'm only filtering for things that I've edited in the last week. Otherwise, this would be extremely long. I'm also sorting this as well, but this database includes every single note and idea that I have that relates to any area in my space. So that could be a meeting note, that could be a podcast note, a YouTube note, a YouTube idea, a content idea, any note or idea that I've had that goes into my notes database that's been actioned in the last week will be shown. 
Now, when I go back to that dashboard, you can see review is zero because I've now reviewed that exercise space that I needed to review. And when that goes to zero, I can say I've completed that task, change the last done, and that will disappear from my to-do list. Now, this next tab in my space is actually my play area. And this is where I work with different template ideas, different free templates that I give out on my public page, which you can find a link to on my YouTube banner and in the description of this video and every other video. But this play page allows me to experiment and explore different ways to use Notion, different things you can embed in Notion, and different ideas of how I may want to adapt my space in the future, but I don't want to implement it straight away. And that relates to a couple of the mistakes I see people making with Notion is they, they just constantly tinker with things and they want to change things, but test things out, see if they work. If they do work, then put them into your space. My next tab bar is my dissertation. I'm not going to go in there for this video because I'm going to do a whole video on how I've written my dissertation in Notion. So I'll go to the next tab bar, which is my YouTube area. So you can see I'm in my dashboard review areas database and YouTube section. Now this is a page in my areas database and every page in my areas database has projects, tasks, card amount, card amount, due, due. They are for the flashcards revision. Then I have my flashcards. You can see I have two YouTube flashcards plus the template because there's a template in the flashcards database. Then I have last reviewed for that tick box, the review tick box. And then I have all of the notes associated with my YouTube area. So I can jump to any of those things at any time, just being in this page. Now, when I actually go down to the content of the page, you can see I have my playlist planning, my subtasks, notes, and all the other things. And I will go into further detail of all of this and how this works in a future video. But for this overview, essentially, this is where all of the notes and learning from YouTube specifically are kept. And you can see my notes database is filtered for YouTube. I do have a link to my other creators playlist, which is on my YouTube channel. If you go into playlist, you can see all of the other Notion videos that I've watched. But I have that link there just in case people ask for different YouTube videos around Notion that aren't necessarily done by me. Now, when I scroll down, this is very consistent across my space for dashboards. I will have a linked view of my projects database. And when I go into templates, you can see I have different templates for the different projects that I will be doing, whether that's a client project, LinkedIn, YouTube. And when I do graduate, I will obviously move forwards into social media and probably create other templates for those posts. But in this project template, you can see every single YouTube video and the emoji color, light color, traffic light, whatever you want to call it, that is the progress. So green tick, done, published. Green dot, done, needs to be published. Red cross, haven't done anything. Red, haven't really done much, but have started it. Orange is doing good. And then yellow is in the middle. I also have a separate view for videos, but I won't open that. I'll wait for the other video to go through all of that. But there are different views in this space to see what I need to see. Then as I scroll down, I have a linked view of my task database. Now this is filtered for tasks that are in the YouTube area and are not done. And this is sorted by due date. Now, again, this is very important for this specific space, very similar to how it works on my dashboard on my front dashboard. But in here, all of the tasks are sorted by when the video is due. So if I need to move some tasks next week because my week is busy, I know I can just drag the bottom tasks down a week next to the page because they are the tasks that have less priority. When I go into my content marketing page, it is very similar to my YouTube page because the workflow is very, very similar. I have my notes, all of the learning and things that I've consumed from either YouTube content or other people's content talking about, about how to do content marketing and social media marketing, etc. And all of those notes are here. So they're all in the right place. And I have my notes database again, filtered for the area, which is content marketing. And then as I scroll down, I have my projects database. And at the moment, like I've said, because I'm doing my dissertation, this is actually only projects that are YouTube related and business related because I don't have any business projects going on. There's none showing. And because I don't have any content going out on other social media platforms, none of them are showing either. So it's just showing YouTube videos. But all I would need to do to turn this into a content marketing 
dashboard for projects is to change the filter. And again, the same process applies in the task database. Now, I actually have filtered for publish because I don't want to see all of the tasks for YouTube, but when I'm making social media content, my pillar content is my YouTube videos. So I need to know when they're going to be published. So the task is related to when the video is going to be published. And then I can make social media tasks around those published dates. Now in my task database, I don't have templates for the tasks because they're actually inside of my projects template. And again, I will go over that process in a future video, but that saves me having to create the same tasks for projects that I'm doing on a repeated basis, i.e. making social media content or YouTube videos. Now note taking is a beast on its own, so I have its own space for note taking. And you can see I have new notes, which are what's shown on my dashboard. And then I have filtered notes. So if I drag this filtered note, which I filtered earlier today, back into my new notes and go to my dashboard, you can see that note is now being shown in my dashboard as a new note. Then when I go into my note taking dashboard, I can drag that note over to the filtered view of my notes database, and that will automatically add the correct filter onto it. So you can see this area contains content marketing. And as I go down, you can see all of the other filtered views of my notes database with different tags. So essentially I can drag a note and tag it just by dragging and dropping it into a filtered view of the same database. Now I'm going to use my shortcut control one to get back to my dashboard. And then I can click on content marketing. And now you can see that note because we filtered it into content marketing is now showing there. Now, if I use that shortcut again, control one to go back to my dashboard, go back to the note taking space. You can see the note is still in that filtered view, but this is filtered for things for today. So all of the other content marketing notes aren't showing here. They're showing in content marketing. If I were to make a new note on that dashboard, I can then choose from any of the templates I have in there. So for example, if I'm learning something, I would create a note, click on flashcards, now, when I make any notes, I can create flashcards right inside of this note that is already related to the note. And like I said earlier, the flashcards show in my review space. Now, I can change the name to this note, say new note, and it will automatically filter for that because of the filter I already have in there. And again, I will go over this process in a future video of how I've done this. But what this allows me to do is create a note, create flashcards and filter everything straight away very quickly in my workflow that works for me. So if I quickly go into that flashcards database, you can see every single flashcard has a relation to my notes database. So if I answer the question correctly or incorrectly, I can go back to where I referenced that flashcard from. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this will be a step-by-step -step process through my workspace, but be aware, if things do change along the way, it's because Notion is evolving, my workflow is evolving, and as updates come out, things may change. So if you have any questions about any of my workspace, put it down in the comments section below, but until then, check out this video over here, and I'll see you there.